Now that we know that our application is running OK with Nginx, Postgres, and everything, it's time we commit our changes over to a service like GitHub. We'll need to add in a remote reference and use SSH to communicate with that service and push our entire repository to that remote location. Let's go over to the terminal really quick. Enter our projects folder, so project slash store, and you can see that the changes are all in here. This is our entire repository, and we only have our master branch. In order to commit to GitHub, we'll need to add in a new remote repository. You type in git remote add and a name for the repository. I'm just going to call the default, it is origin. And I'll type a URL for the repository. Usually when typing in GitHub, you type in git at github.com colon, then the name of your user, in this case, this is mine. And finally, the name of the repository. I'll type it tuts plus store, and then dot git. This will simply store the reference to the URL, the location on GitHub. We'll actually need to do something about it. Because if I just type in git push origin master, this is not going to work. We need to type in yes to accept the new key. And you can see that we don't have sufficient rights. For this purpose, I'm going to Google Chrome and enter GitHub. So in the browser, I'll type in github.com. And I'm already inside my user account. So I can simply go ahead and create a new repository. The new repository is going to be called Tuts Plus Store. I can enter a description if I want. I want to make it public and I don't want to do anything else. I already have the repository. I'm just going to push some changes. There you go. If I already have the existing repository, we do something like this. We've actually done it. And then we can type git push origin master. Dash U allows you to keep your repository in sync with the remote one. When you press enter, you will see the very same error. Let's take a look in detail what it says. It says permission denied public key. Oh, we don't have our public key in the list of keys on GitHub. The thing about GitHub and public keys is these work as the safety procedure for pushing changes onto your own GitHub repositories. When you push onto GitHub, it is going to check if your key matches the key inside GitHub. And if it does, then it allows you to push your changes. The same as you have a key to open your own door at your house, you have the key to access GitHub. Well, where's your key exactly under Linux? The answer is very simple. I'm going to go to the home directory and then change directories to .ssh. .ssh is a hidden folder that contains your keys. If you type in ls, you will see the list of all keys that you have. Or in this case, you don't have any. You just have a file called known hosts. The contents of known hosts contains three different keys. These three different keys match three different locations, which keys you allowed. This means that you can connect to three different servers depending on the key. When you've tried to push changes to GitHub, it asks us to register an RSA fingerprint. I'm assuming this last one is the fingerprint for GitHub. So we don't have any keys whatsoever. Let's generate one really quick. All you have to do is type in ssh dash key gen. Let's type in enter. And as you can see, it is going to generate a pair of keys. SSH keys come in pairs. You have your own private key and a public key, which you pass around to different services. It is asking for us to store a location for the key. The default one is the one you see right there, id underscore rsa. I'm just going to press enter. If you want to, you can set a password. In this case, I'm not going to do it. Because if I pass in a password, every time I push my changes to GitHub, it is going to request for the password. And I really don't want that. Also, the default name for the public key allows me to just push the changes without specifying the key. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead to project slash store again. And we'll need to actually paste the contents of the public key onto GitHub. To do that, I'm going to use the cat command to print the contents of the file, and then tilde 
to specify the home directory .ssh id rsa.pub. You have the contents of this private key and then the respective public key. Whatever comes out to your screen, you should copy it. So I'm just going to drag the mouse around and copy it. You can press Control Shift C or you can right click and select Copy. Then go over GitHub and let's go to the settings right on top. Then choose SSH keys and you can see a bunch of different keys here. I'm just going to add another one. I'll type in Tuts Plus and the contents of the key. Just do that. I'll add in my key, type in my password, and there you go. Our new key is right there. Let's go to the terminal once again, and this time we can safely type in git push origin master. Remember, origin is the reference to GitHub, and master is our branch. Pressing enter, this time it will work. You can see that the master branch is being pushed as a new branch. And notice it is set up to track the remote branch master. That's why we added in dash u. This way we can know the changes between the remote repository and our local repository. If we go to the GitHub repository, we can go and click on GitHub. And then we should go further down below and check Tuts Plus Store. There you go. This is our repository. It has our entire Rails app with everything. It even has the README we didn't touch. So congratulations, you now have the chance to push your changes to GitHub over Linux. Usually in Windows, you would have to have an utility from GitHub perhaps, and then you would do everything automatically. You wouldn't have to know the details of how this works. Well, now you do. You need to create a pair of public and private keys. You push the public key onto GitHub, and you keep the private one for yourself. The private key matches the public key, and when everything goes okay, the changes are committed onto GitHub. So there you go, there's our course on how to develop in Ruby using Linux. I want to invite you to the last lesson where I'll give you a couple of resources and final tips to move on with Linux and Ruby. See you soon!